Hey everybody, welcome back. Steven and John from Davenrich European Martial Arts School. We've been gone for a little bit. I've been traveling, doing workshops, uh, Mexico and California, and so I'm very excited to be back and doing another video with you. Today, we're gonna do a little bit of cutlass work. Always one of my favorites. I love working with the cutlass. But before we actually get into the actual cutlass work, I want to show you an original cutlass. This is an original U.S. Navy training cutlass from the early to mid 1800s. It is an I-beam construction, thick edges. There is a little bit of damage at the point where the metal itself is split. It's a simple construction, two shells with bars riveted in, the stirrup around the handle, and there's even a little bit of wood left inside the handle. It's a lovely piece, uh, but not something I can fight with. So I wanted to have something that I could fight with like this. So I sent a message off to SGT Blades, and we got this blade. I sent them the measurements. They, we did it all by email. Has the same construction, the same measurements, and there is a two ounce difference between the original sword and this reproduction. I think that two ounce difference might be the wooden handle. So. I wanted to have a reproduction of the original blade that I could train with, and I have it thanks to SGT blades. And with that, we're going to start our talk about cutlasses, but we're going to use different cutlasses. So now that we've got our cutlasses, we're going to be using these. Uh, the cutlass is based on the sable work of the 19th century. The same kind of cut work that we see in 19th century saber as well as even a screma. We have a cut one, we have a cut two, cut three is a rising blow, cut four is a rising blow, cut five is a horizontal blow, cut six is a horizontal blow, seven is a descending blow straight down. Because these were used on board ships or in other tight confinements, they're very short so that they don't get caught up in the rigging or the spars or if I'm fighting below decks, get caught up in the beams. So everything stays in tight and it is really more of a hacking weapon. It is not a finesse weapon. Most of the people that you see fighting with this type of weapon on board ship, they were brawlers and they were really good at what they did. So what we're going to work on today is imagining that we have spars and lines up above our head, so we're keeping everything in tight. But because of the shell that we've got, he has a three-quarter, I have just an earlier style with a knuckle bow and a shell, we can use the guard to grip. When we think about fighting on board ship, remember, you can only go forwards. There is nothing to the sides or behind you. Y you can't run away from the fight. You must engage. And the only safe way to do that is to go forward. So this is a highly aggressive style. What we're gonna do is we start off here and I've just come on board John's ship. He dislikes that, wants to show me why I should not be there. And because of this style and the brawling, the simple cuts are going to be a one, a two, a seven. We're not going to do, we can do fives and sixes, but if we're in tight quarters, let's move this way just a little bit, mm -hmm. and then give me a five. Well, then I'll just stick them because that works for me. He caught on some sparring or some lines. So if we are doing five and six, and I want to show you how to work on those in tight quarters. If you give me a one, I'm going to capture it in a high guard here. 
This gives me the ability to defend, turn it around, and come back in with a seven. If he gives me a two, I'm going to capture it here. This gives him the ability to punch me. And I know that, so it never works alone. If he gives me that two again, it's going to be here and then driving to the inside so that I've got control of his arm so that when I swing down his head, I can hit him. Or when he goes to grab my arm, I can shorten it and take his arm. And I probably won't cut it off. That's not what these are going to do. I will, however, break his arm, and that will slow him down. So there's our one, two, and seven in quick use. But how do we throw a five, six in tight quarters? So if I throw a six and I do this, I hit all the things around me, and I've given him beautiful targets to just work through. So as we do it, we keep our elbow in tight. When I'm teaching my classes, I like to think, I, I tell my students, when you're throwing these cuts to protect yourself, imagine you're elbowing somebody behind you. So as I'm doing it, I'm here, then I'm going forward. So it's pulling back and then forward, and that gives me the strong cut. So you're going to give me a six at my shoulder, and I'm just going to give you a target. There's that blow. If I didn't have my sword in the way, he would have hit me right in the side of the neck, or he could put it into my shoulder or my elbow. He has the choice. If I'm giving him a two, get, there's a technical term for getting hit right on the elbow. The technical term is sucks. This is highly unpleasant. Having had it happen a few times, I would suggest you don't do it. So we pull it in tight and then throw forward. Where this is important is I'm going to throw a six, and he's going to counter me with a two to my forearm. That's his goal, break that arm so I can't fight with this sword anymore. As I begin my six, I'm going to drop my elbow down, and it becomes a two, so I can cover and then take his shoulder. Let's do it one more time. And it just cuts right in. Let's switch sides so they can see that. So I throw my six, and I'm successful. So I come through, I pull it back, elbow the guy behind me, and then snap it out to take his neck, his bicep, or his elbow. He counters me by doing a two to my forearm. I dislike that, so I don't want that to happen. So as I begin the action, because my elbow's up, I drop my elbow down, that puts my sword in the way, and then I kind of just pivot right around his sword into the blow. Now, I want to make sure that he doesn't hit me back. This does not mean he's done fighting. I've broken his clavicle, but there's a lot of adrenaline going on. He's still got that other hand. So from there, I'm going to go forward. It's the only safe place for me to be. I'm going to drive my body into his cage, grabbing my blade and shoving him back. So if we do that again, and then I can stab him. One more time, just because I like doing it. So I begin my cut. He countercuts me, and he's successful. So I come to the next guy. I drop it down, and I walk in right behind it, and I drive my body into his cage. He now has no room to be able to put any force into that. I grab my own sword, and I'm not pushing him back. I am, I'm going to flip this around. Thank you. I am pushing down and driving it into his trap. Then driving forward with my point to get it out, I then twist to go on to the next guy. Why don't you do it to me? Okay. So give me a six. You're going to be successful. Great. Do it again. I'm successful and I break his arm. So now I come through, he drops it to a two. Now, See how low you drop that? No, I'm not going to I'm going to win. That one. So you can't drop your hand too low. There it is, and then over the top, and you just push into it, and then down and cut, followed through by a thrust, 
and then twist and move on to the next guy. There's always somebody else to fight until there isn't. You don't know when you're done until somebody says, stop hitting me. Right? Yep. <laughs> Not that we've had that conversation before. No. Oh, no, no, never. We can do the same thing with a five. If I throw a five and I'm coming in here, I don't want to do this because I'm going to hit things or I'm going to hit one of my own guys. Even if I hit one of the attacking shipmen, that can get stuck and he's still got everything he wants to do to be right there. So that doesn't work well for me. So the same idea is I pull it in, I bring my hand in front of me, so my forte is in front of my sternum. As I do this, I'm in here, I pull it down, I open, I put the forte and then I snap it forward. This, I like to think of this almost like a bulletproof vest. It always goes in front of my sternum, so I'm protected. And all I need to do to change the angle is drop my elbow. And I can get a one off of my five. So if I come in to cut John and he steps to the side and counter cuts, cuts my arm. Broke my wrist, broke my arm. I'm no longer fighting and he's in a good strong place to put me down. If, on the other hand, I bring it in this way and I go tight, I can just lever right around his sword and take the neck. One more time. He's successful because I cut too wide. I pull it in tight and I can get that nice strike in there. Again, he's not necessarily done fighting, so I'm going to pull it off. I am not going to retract my sword. I can't go backward. From here, I'm driving forward, both of them into his neck. Probably slug him or stab him with my knife if I have that too. Or mine. <laughs> right, there's nothing that says I can't do this. So, as you practice with your cutlass, what I want you to remember there's a lot of things in the way. I can't swing wide because I'm gonna hit something or someone that I don't intend to hit. I have no problem hitting John. You might have noticed that. But I only ever want to do it on purpose. I have no problem hitting other people. But you only hit the things you want to hit. If I am unable to control where my sword goes, I am unable to protect myself from something that surprises me. As you practice these cuts, make sure you keep them in tight and then punch out for your strike so that you're protected the whole time. Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the little lesson on cuts five and six with a cutlass and how to use it in tight spaces. This could be on ship or on land. We saw a lot of this, uh, this type of action of pirates and privateers working on land attacking towns. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed what you saw, please hit the subscribe and notification button below and share this video with your friends. John, thanks for your help. Always a pleasure. Take care, everyone. See you the next time.